Now, you take us back to the very beginning of the audio research group. I think that's and, right. Uh, Tell us what the lab looked like, Mark. What, what was it like? Well, I, I, I remember, John, that actually the, the very first project that I uh, worked on with you, I think, was um, uh, wiring up a, uh, an all-pass filter for some uh, subjective testing work that we were going to do. Oh. And I think that that was actually not even in the audio lab. I think that was in a smaller uh, facility. So I think it was after that that you got the, the lab and just started to uh, load up with the equipment. So um, when, when I uh, first started working with you on the, the hand soldering of this thing, which I didn't do that great a job on, as I recall, I think we had to redo it. But um, the, uh, uh, I don't think we, we had set up the lab just yet. Uh, so that, that came uh, maybe within the first six months or something. I started in uh, 1980 uh, was when I started working there. And um, I remember that uh, uh, I uh, had decided I wanted to work in the audio field and I'd uh, written a letter uh, to, to you folks. I found you through the Audio Engineering Society and I uh, got a very kind response back uh, from my expression of interest and then uh, set up a, a trip to come out and visit and uh, understand more about the, the lab and the work you folks were doing. You were coming from Alberta, weren't you? That's right. Yeah, I was yes. in Calgary at the time. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so that was the, the uh, initial introduction. and. Uh, and then uh, when I came out, I was uh, working for, uh, for a year in, in qualifying courses to get into the electrical engineering program, but on, uh, as well as that was uh, working with uh, the lab on some of the uh, audio work that you were uh, doing at the time. I actually w um, was able to um, well, present a, a, a paper there, or two papers I guess actually, one on the uh, 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 binaural localization work that I did, but another one on the audibility of uh, mid-range uh, phase distortion uh, that uh, that we worked on together. That's what the all-pass filters were for. <laughs> exactly right. <Yeah. laughs> now, 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 Stan, Stan designed that filter, or a lot of it, and, and uh, he, he built it too, did he? I mean... Uh, well, I think designed it, and I uh, wired up some parts of it, and uh, the, then uh, it was designed to simulate the uh, phase distortion of, uh, of uh, crossover networks in loudspeakers to see whether it was important or not to have a linear phase response in speaker systems because that was quite a topic for debate at the time. Yeah. Well, it still is in some ways. <laughs> and, and the filter's still there, Mark. It's still working fine. Oh, good. Now, Mark, something that I remember that you may remember as well is we sat in your Supra. You'd bought a Toyota Supra. <laughs> and I remember Stan was wondering why you'd bought so extravagant a car. And I think he was complaining about that. <laughs> Since then, I've had one as well. Oh, okay. So we know now why it's such a nice car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember driving up to uh, Floyd Tool's uh, place for dinner that night with, uh, with you folks in the car. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and Floyd had... Probably, I don't know if we should say this, but anyway, Floyd had said uh, there was a certain section of the road where he always got up to like 90 miles an hour or something like that on that. I said, okay, we'll have to see if we can do that or not. <laughs> you know, and and uh, uh, one of the other projects that uh, we worked on while I was in the lab was the uh, THX uh, crossover network. Um, you folks had made uh, contact with uh, Tom Holman and uh, he was looking to, he'd, he'd realized that uh, the, the classical voice of the theater, all tech Lansing speakers that were in the movie theaters at the time, uh, couldn't reproduce the uh, uh, environment that he wanted to be able to, uh, to, to generate. And so was looking for a new speaker system and designing it and, and uh, the uh, Audio Lab at Waterloo got involved with designing the crossover network for the, for the uh, speaker systems at, in uh, the theatres, for the theatre speaker systems. Well, were you there when we, we did all those measurements in the Humanities Theatre? That's right, yeah, set up the, okay. the drivers and uh, had the mid-range driver yeah, the and the baffled, low frequency. Baffled uh, sub, uh, subwoofer. Yeah. Yes, all of that, yeah. And in fact, I remember that I, I made a mistake one day in doing the measurements with the crossover network and put too much low frequency into the mid-range driver and blew up the driver and about <laughs> that. <laughs> well so when I was uh, doing my uh, binaural localization studies you'll recall that we uh, had borrowed a Keymar uh, Knowles Electronics acoustic mannequin um, but it only had one ear and uh, I needed <laughs> one two. One instrument ear. <laughs> 
So uh, we, we searched around and found that uh, Bell Northern Research had a second ear, so we, I contacted them and said, lend me your ear. And uh, they, they did, they agreed. It wasn't another right ear, it was a left ear. It was the other one, so that worked out well. 